following morning, Nana dropped me off for my Sunday round, which I completed in record time. When I got home, I went straight to bed for a couple of hours, like I usually did on a Sunday. Next week, I wouldn't have this luxury, so I was going to make the most of it. At 10 o'clock, my alarm beat loudly at me. I groaned, hit it to make it shut up and allowed my brain to slowly start to come round. Then I groaned again. I had plans to meet up with Slight half ten. Some of his relatives were visiting for the weekend and he'd used me as an excuse to get out of spending any more time with his cousins than he had to. I know he wouldn't care too much if I was late, but I still cared. Wearily, I stretched and swung myself out of bed. Shutting into the hall, some part of my brain noted how quiet it was, but I was in too much of a rush to wash, dress and get out of the door to remember why the house was so quiet. For a few moments after I was ready, I stood at the top of the stairs, yawning. No head in trouble getting up early, but my Sunday morning naps always left me seriously groggy. I was just about to head down the stairs and out the door when I heard footsteps approaching me from behind. So, how much more will you be earning? An all too familiar voice cut through the silence. Can, can we, can we talk about it later? I went round to face him. I'm late meeting a friend. You're not going anywhere, he scoffed. What about your weekend chores? I... I did them yesterday, before seeing Mr Flora, I swallowed hard. Please, I... I promise I'll be back early and we can talk about it then. But... if I'm late... Is that a threat? His voice was filled with cold amusement. No, I... Fear suddenly ran through me as I caught sight of the dangerous look in his eyes. I... I'm sorry, we... I... I'm not sure what happened next. The more I try to think about it, the less certain I become. I know he moved towards me, tried to grab hold of me. Or at least I assume that's what must have happened, and maybe I flinched away or something. I really can't be sure, and thinking about it, I don't know. All I know is somehow I ended up hurtling down the stairs. It all happened so quickly it barely registered in my mind. This was far from my first trip down the stairs, so once I landed at the bottom, I just got up and checked my headband was still in place. My eyes glanced up to see a look of disbelief on Baz's face. In all honesty, that look made me hesitate. He only ever looked like that when I was more seriously injured, but nothing felt broken. So why was he looking like that now? I couldn't comprehend what had happened. It was like my brain hadn't caught up, so my body just took over. And why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it take over and get me out of that house? Even in that state, I knew the look on Baz's face meant he wouldn't come after me. So my body just walked away from him. Walked because it knew it couldn't run. Walked because walking was a basic task. And basic tasks were easy. I didn't feel the pain at first. Sly, as per usual, had arrived early. His face fell when he saw me, a look of horror I swear I'll never forget. Still, the pain didn't kick in. He ran over to me, said something, I don't know what. Something made me look down. It had been a warm spring day. I was wearing a t-shirt. The hallway was being decorated. Some of the spokes in the banister were loose or damaged from my various impacts with them over the years. It was one of the things Baz was looking to fix with his decorating. My arm was bleeding. I had sudden vague memories of a cracking sound as I'd fallen. I placed my hand over the bleeding section of my arm. Through warm stickiness, I felt something poking out. Part of it crumbled into my hand, revealing a smoother object underneath. I stared wide-eyed at Sly. His face was distorted in panic. He was still talking, but it was all gibberish to me. I closed my eyes, and the pain finally set in. Jay! Sly's panic-stricken voice finally broke through. Jay, we've got to get you to a hospital. I nodded, but I was unable to move. Jay! Jay, did you hear me? I said we've got to get you to a hospital. Jay, please. We've got to get moving. Jay, say something, anything, please. Val is near here. I murmured. I know that! He somehow managed to sound both scared and confused at the same time. It's the weekend, so his dad will be home. My brain felt like it was struggling between complete calmness and utter panic mode. They've got a car. Yes, yes, a car.
car. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. I fell. I remained frozen to the spot. I fell down the stairs. I was careless. I was running. I tripped over my own feet. What the hell? He gawked at me. J-Man, who cares how you did this? We've got to get you to a hospital. You need to get moving now. You said yourself, Zell lives near here. They've got a car. They can take us to the hospital, but nothing's going to happen unless we get moving. I fell. I repeated. I fell down the stairs. I was careless. I was running. I tripped over my own feet. For God's sake, man! He made a grab for me, clearly willing to drive me to Zell's house if he had to. Fear encased me. Just the sight of his hand coming towards me was terrifying. I backed away, every inch of me not trusting he wouldn't hurt me too. I told you, I fell. I fell all right. I fell, I fell, I fell. I was losing grip on myself. I could feel it, but I was powerless to stop it. Why don't you listen? Don't you believe me? Is that it? I fell, I fell. It was my own fault. No one else's, I swear. I fell, I fell. I never said I didn't believe you. You looked just as upset and frightened as I felt. I said we had to get you to a hospital. You've lost a lot of blood, still losing a lot of blood. We've got to get to Zell's. His dad will take us to a hospital, okay? He reached for me again, but I flinched away. I fell, I fell. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I fell. I can see that. For the love of God, Jay, please. We've got to get you to a hospital. I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell. A part of my mind was aware of the fact I must have sounded like a toddler in a temper tantrum, but I couldn't stop. I fell. Jay, calm down, man. Please. He made another desperate attempt to reach out to me, but I couldn't. Couldn't let anyone hurt me. I fell. I began backing away from him. Terrified. He was my oldest friend, and I was terrified of him. Looking back on it now makes me feel terrible. But at the time, at the time, I couldn't get enough of a grip on my own thoughts to feel anything other than fear and pain. Jay! I don't think I've ever seen anyone look as hurt as Sly did in that moment. Okay, I hear you. You fell, he saw a tod. And now I've got to get you to a hospital. Okay. I fancy you wrong. My frantic and frazzled mind became distracted. You want to go for a run? I think I'm going to go for a run. Jay, please. The words were half sobbed, and even in my frazzled state, I could tell he was trying hard not to actually start crying. Please, I can't get you to a hospital. I want to go for a run. It was like I couldn't hear him or was running on autopilot or something. Do you want to hear a joke? What? A joke? A joke? You want to hear one? No, not now. Right now, I want to get you to a hospital. But I want to go for a run. Fine, I'll race you to Zell's. Zell's, I repeated in wonder. Zell lives near here. I know. I'll race you to his, okay? I went quiet again. Jay! Jay, please! I don't want to run to Zell's. But before he could get any further, I began to walk in the direction of Zell's house. After a moment, Sly fell into place beside me. Jay! He was clearly still scared. Jay, are you alright? My arm's bleeding. I fell down the stairs and my arm's bleeding. I murmured, mystified, slowly feeling some of my sanity returning to me. Something... Something's in my arm. My hand went to where I was bleeding, playing with what was there, trying to work out what it was. Jay, don't! His hand moved towards me. I guess to stop me from accidentally making things worse. I squirmed tensely and he pulled away. My sanity might have been returning, but I was still afraid of him, of everyone. I lowered my hand, even though everything in me still wanted to know what was in my arm. We were silent for the rest of the journey to Zell's place. He was in the process of mowing their small front lawn when we approached. I'm almost certain he waved at us and knowing him as well as I do, I'm sure he must have been smiling Happy for the distraction from his work. But I don't really remember that expression. I remember the expression he made after. The expression he made when he saw the blood on my arm. Dad! Dad! He started yelling before we'd reached him. A weedy looking man, who really couldn't have been anyone other than Zell's father for how alike they looked, leaned out of their front window. What is it? 
So I was too speechless to answer. I said he just pointed to me. Oh my, Mrs. Endell gulped. We've got to get him to the hospital. Stay right there, boys. I'll be right out. He disappeared back inside, and Zell turned towards us. What the? How the? What the? Zell, I whispered. Zell's dad reappeared, this time coming out of the front door, keys in hand. Everybody in the car now, he ordered. Shouldn't we wrap the arm first? Zell wheezed a little. It might help stop the bleeding. That's a good idea, but we don't have time to find something. I want all of you to get in the car right now. Yes, sir. Zell nodded before ushering Sly and me into his father's car. We all sat in the back, with me in the middle. I never sat so rigid in my whole life, somehow managing not to touch either of my friends despite the cramped space we were in. Or at least that's how I remember it. My brain was starting to sort through its own chaos now, and there were moments I felt genuinely bad for being this uncomfortable and afraid of my own friends. But I couldn't just switch it off and pretend things were normal. They weren't normal. Nothing about this was normal, least of all the thoughts going on inside my own head. Which one's he again? Zell's father glanced at us in the rearview mirror. It's Jay. Zell's voice was still wheezy. Don't worry, Jane. I know a shortcut to the hospital. We'll be there in no time. Just ask Zell. At that, we set off. Next to me, Zell pulled his inhaler out and took a puff. Even in my frazzled state, I knew there were only two reasons Zell ever needed to use his inhaler. When he'd overexerted himself, and when he was too stressed and couldn't calm himself down. Knowing his parents, I doubt he would have been allowed to mow if it caused him to become overexerted to that extent. So that left only one thing it could be. Me. He was stressed out because of me. I'd done that to him. That was the last thing I clearly remember before reaching the hospital. Things became kind of blurry and disjointed after that. I don't know if it was the motion of the car, too much blood loss or what, but the next solid thing I can remember is a nurse asking for my parents' number. No one's home. My voice was dry. Is there anyone else we can call? Family-wise, I mean. My nana. The nurse nodded and took my nana's number from me. Now my treatment was over, my friends were allowed to come in to see me. We tried phoning rides, but no one's home. Zell wasted no time in informing me. We thought he'd want to know. Well, if we don't get through to him today, we'll shop him with it tomorrow. I tried to laugh. That's cruel, he pulled a face. He'd want to know. Yeah, but this way he'll experience some of the fun too, right? I did my best to smirk, but even I could tell how weak it must have looked. I mean, it'd feel incomplete if I didn't freak all my friends out. I got a little bit of a laugh out of them, but I could tell from their expressions they were worried. But I figured if I kept playing it off as normal, I could make it normal somehow. Sorry I acted so off earlier. I shot them both an apologetic look. It's all right, Sly shrugged and shook his gaze away. Nurse told me it'll probably down to shock. You talk to a nurse about my freak out? Hey, I was worried, man. Besides, by this time you started laughing hysterically and they wanted to know what you were like when I found you. Laughing hysterically? I felt confused. I really didn't remember that. They said he might not remember. He looked uncomfortable. They must have pumped you so full of painkillers. I don't get how it happened. Zell folded his arms in a serious manner. So I said, you said you'd fallen down the stairs, but... But what? It's the truth. I became defensive. It was an accident. There was... A nail. In your arm, Jay. His gaze narrowed, watching me closely. How does something like that happen on accident? The... Bannisters needed replacing for a while. I couldn't look at him. It was... Bound to happen? No, it wasn't. Now Sly went all serious on me. Not, not like this. Jay, he hesitated. Jay, be honest with us here. These accidents you keep having, are they really accidents? What are you saying? Jay, we need to know. He bit his lip nervously, exchanging a look with Zell as he did. Is, is someone making these accidents happen? What? I felt genuinely shocked. All this time I thought I'd been fooling them. What would make you say that? Because I've known you a long time. 
I can't remember one week when you haven't had one minor accident or another. And now in the space of five days, you've had a bruise to the face and a nail through the arm. You just want to know what gives. I paused for a moment. Hadn't I wanted them to question me like this? Hadn't I wanted them to know me that well? But what was I supposed to do next? Tell them the truth? Almost as soon as I started thinking it, they appeared in the corners of my vision. Within seconds, my demons were closing in, daring me to see what would happen if I told. I felt myself recoil inwards. My friends were finally asking questions and it wasn't that I couldn't tell them the truth. It was that I wasn't allowed to. The accidents. My voice was tight. Jay. Zell took a step towards me and I couldn't help but flinch away. For a moment there was silence. I got it now. I got why they'd chosen to ask these questions now. Because I'd been afraid of them. The accidents. I somehow managed to lift my eyes up, first meeting Zell's gaze and then Sly's. The accidents. I could feel myself trembling. The accidents. Zell and Sly exchanged a look. I could read the disappointment and defeat on their faces but they weren't going to get anything else from me. Okay, we believe you. Sly's expression was filled with the same hopeless sadness as his voice. If, if you say they're accidents then, we'll just have to believe you.